And it was a busy day today for President Joe Biden in Poland. Now, the president, who would typically maybe be heading to his home in Delaware or Camp David for the weekend, instead doing his very best to play the part of leader of the free world. In what was supposed to be a motivational speech to the 82nd Airborne Division, Sleepy Joe certainly woke me up, I don't know if it happened to you, when he made these scary remarks about U.S. troops going into Ukraine. Listen. You're going to see when you're there, some of you have been there, you're going to see, you're going to see women, young people standing, standing in the middle of the front of a damn tank, just saying, I'm not leaving. What? Well, the White House has backtracked on that statement, insisting that there are no plans to send U.S. troops into Ukraine. But this is what happens when Biden is forced to spend a whole day actually working. He kicked off his day bright and early with a joint press statement with the president of the European Commission. And Biden announced an effort to reduce European dependence on Russian oil. Listen. This initiative focuses on two core issues. One, helping Europe reduce its dependency on Russian gas as quickly as possible. And secondly, reducing Europe's demand for gas overall. All right, so it's easy to miss it, but that was a soft admission, soft anyway, that the world is not yet ready to run on 100% renewable energy. But it was a very clear admission that they are not giving up on their green agenda. In the meantime, the United States and other countries will be increasing natural gas exports to Europe. But even the New York Times admits that this is not a plan that can be implemented overnight. It says the Biden administration's plan to send more natural gas to Europe will be hampered by the lack of export and import terminals. And then they go on to report that building enough terminals could take two to five years. More from the Times. Look at this. Some European countries, including Germany, have until recently been uninterested in building LNG terminals because it was far cheaper to import gas by pipeline from Russia. Really? Well, Germany is now reviving plans to build its first LNG import terminal on its northern coast. Now, it would have been much easier if they had just listened to Trump back in 2018 when he warned of cozying up to Russia. Perhaps, maybe, this entire conflict could have been avoided. Instead, President Joe Biden returned us to the era of leading from behind and following the old Washington way of just throwing more and more money at the problem, hoping that it solves it. Here is Biden at another event today with a Polish president, Andrzej Duda. Listen. We're prepared to provide another one billion, as the ambassador pointed out, one billion dollars for those who fled and those who are affected around the world as a consequence of the negative impact of this war on food security. All right, so while all of the humanitarian aid will do a lot to ease the suffering, and it's needed, and the military aid is un undoubtedly what has allowed the Ukrainians to fight off the Russians so successfully, money alone will not solve this problem. The White House should be leading the way on brokering peace. Instead, the Washington Post reports this, that top Russian military leaders repeatedly decline calls from the U.S., prompting fears of sleepwalking into war. So much of what we are seeing today echoes the Carter administration. You know, the high gas prices, the soaring inflation. But even Carter was able to arrange the Camp David Accords. Do you see Biden pulling off something like that? We left Afghanistan in total chaos less than a year ago, and now we are on the brink of a world war. That is what happens when America is weak. But Joe Biden at least appears to understand that concept. Here's another portion of his speech to our troops today. Listen. And the rest of the world looks to us because, you know, we not only lead by the example of our power, but by the power of our example. That much is true. Like it or not, world peace is predicated on our strength. And Joe Biden makes no secret that he would actually rather be liked than be strong. He's so paralyzed by the polls and making an unpopular decision. 
the world watched for months as Putin built his troops up on the Ukrainian border. At the time, Germany was still in favor of the Nord Stream 2 pipeline. I believe they still are. Well, Biden was probably deathly afraid of taking a hardline stance that would upset our European allies. So he didn't do anything, nothing, until Putin crossed the border. And as a result, Biden now says the world is going to be facing food shortages. Russia and Ukraine, if you didn't know, they account for 30% of the world's wheat exports, 17% of corn, 32% of barley, and 75% of sunflower seed oil. Russia also happens to export about 15% of the world's fertilizer. American weakness means untold suffering for the rest of the world. To paraphrase Barack Obama himself, never underestimate Joe Biden's ability to mess something up.